Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Between Two Beards podcast. I'm Chris <laughs> Rampasso and joining me tonight is Ancient Ship of Doom, Dan Ryan. <laughs> With the end of August upon us, it's time for a very special edition of the 10, 20, 30, 40, and yes, we're renaming the podcast to Between Two Beards. <laughs> because Just try and stop us, Carlos. <laughs> That's right, Carlos. <laughs> or Ryan, or anyone else. Uh, Fight me. It's a very special 10, 20, 30, 40, as we're recording this on the actual 30th anniversary of the Super NES console launch. Yay! Be careful with all that super power, because the Stone Age Gamer oh, oh. podcast starts now. <laughs> You know the problems I've been having with superpower. You got some serious ass superpower problems. You got some serious serious ass now you're playing with superpower problems. God damn it. All right, Hi, that's I'm going home. I'm done. This is episode uh, 373. It's the week of August 27th, 2021. And Dan, guess what I did this weekend? Um, Man, there is no telling what, Chris. I went and visited my friend Mike. Good old Mike Castlevania Sheridan. Oh, I like that guy. I went and hung out with him. And it He's was a great. doll. He is a doll. It he was really it was is. wonderful. It was, it, I was hung out with him and his wife and his rabbit, and it was great. I got a little <laughs> little bunny named Iro. Well, naturally, hoppy little floofy dude, floofy dude. But yeah, it was it was awesome. I just like I just hung out with, and played video games and and ate bagels and and yodels and uh <laughs> and bugles was, lots they, of things that ends in holes <laughs> all types. i went to my favorite bagel place which was oh this was funny so i used to live in elmwood park and my favorite bagel place was called the bagel base and <laughs> so we it. get there and the uh first off i was like i recognized the woman behind the counter and i was like hey it's been a long time uh, you you know probably don't remember. She was like, actually, I don't remember you at all because you probably think I'm my twin sister. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's awesome. What are the fucking odds of that? <laughs> I don't fucking know you, you prick. I have a twin. That's amazing. That was uh, that was astonishing. Um, but anyway, she was working there with her daughter and no one else. And Ooh. um, I asked for a dozen bagels. She's like, the best we can do is six because the baker didn't show up today. Mm. And uh, then, like, a bunch of people walked in behind me and Mike, and, like, things just fell to shit. <laughs> like, they started <laughs> working on my order, but the daughter, this was clear, like, she was, like, a she must have been, like, 14 tops. And Aww. this was clearly, like, her first or second day. She's, like, dropping in the middle of an order to answer the phone and take an order, and the mom's in the back, and like, you don't pick up the phone in the middle of fixing somebody else's order. She's like, <laughs> but now are we going to get more customers if I don't answer the phone? <laughs> <laughs> They got my order together fairly quick, but then she started buttering Mike's bagel, then she took the phone order, then she started helping somebody else, and then she just kind of forgot about it for a while, and me and Mike are just standing there like, it's so close, it's right there, she's just got to take the other half of the bagel and put it on top of that, and then give it to me. <laughs> it was a disaster. And then the bagels weren't all that good, because, you know, oh, clearly they were... The baker wasn't there. The baker wasn't there, so there were no fresh bagels, and it's uh, it was a bummer. <laughs> I was bummed out. But I tell that you sucks, what didn't man. bum me out was just getting to hang out with Mike. It was a wonderful time. We went to Digital Press, and we also played some games that I don't ha usually have access to, including the night I got there. I got there on Friday night, and I stayed over for most of Saturday. I finally played Battletoads on Xbox. Oh, how was it? It was it was okay. It's um, <laughs> that's it not a ringing endorsement. No, no, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it was it all right. Here's the thing: it's not Streets of Rage four. <laughs> well, <laughs> or but, hopefully, it's not this new fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Get more, uh, yeah. more excited about it's, that. Pfft, Wednesday, uh -huh. right? We get a new trailer on Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. I hope it I hope it comes with a release date. I'm so <sighs> excited! It looks so good. It's gonna um, shadow drop that day. Cause why not? But just because it's not those two things, it was actually it's actually quite good. I thought the sense of humor was great. The voice acting is pretty funny. It's got some um it's got a couple of like weird issues that uh, who developed this game? I can't remember. I know it wasn't rare. No. Xbox 
I thought it was somebody that we knew. Was it, no, it was Xbox One or something. Who the... Alright, Xbox, Battletoads, come on, can I get some information on this game, not just where to buy it? <laughs> Battletoads 2020, alright. Developed by... What? Diala Studios? Oh, no, that's not somebody we know. D... D la la studios. <laughs> uh, la okay. la la. Like a fucking Fuji song? Yeah. Uh, now I'm going right, to have to listen so... to Fuji's. And this appears to be it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> they did something called Nothing. Oh, Nothing to Fear is currently in production. Overruled. It's a multiplayer brawler. Janksy. Okay, so these guys don't have much of a history, and it shows. <laughs> um. Battletoads is pretty cool, um, but it's got a couple of, I would say, I would consider rookie mistakes. Like, if a more seasoned developer went at this, they wouldn't have done things like, there's all this great uh, humor and talking and stuff that takes place throughout the course of the game, but every time mm. it happens, it gr everything grinds to a halt to do it. Mm. And they're not like cutscenes or anything like that. It's just like everything stops and the toads start talking to each other, but it's not lip synced or anything, so it's just like... You're standing there, and they're having this banter back and forth. And, like, I was mentioning it to Mike, like, this is really obnoxious because this is entertaining. The Like, the game's entertaining, and these cutscenes are entertaining, but it's it's screwing up the whole rhythm of the game to have to stop and watch this. And I'm thinking back to, like, the original Turtles arcade game where, like, Bebop shows up, and they have the banter while you're doing the fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what they should have done with this. Um but the yeah, the actual game mechanics are pretty decent. It's yeah, you know, the first stage was a brawler. Uh the first couple of stages were very brawler esque, and then we went to the turbo tunnel and we got we got pretty far into that and then it was getting late and I was I'm old and tired. Uh, but it was <laughs> it was fun. It's very nice looking. I'm still shocked this hasn't shown up on Switch yet, because I don't know that the game did very well on Xbox, but it seems like the kind of thing that would perform well elsewhere. Um Mm. But yeah, I, I know people yeah, were really it, complaining about its personality, and I think that's ridiculous. Like, the whole the whole plot of the game, like, you're doing the whole beginning thing, like, the Battletoads are back, and they're all, like, you know, superhero powerful and really popular, and they're gonna get, like, a movie made out of them or something like that, and it's, it's all like, yeah, the Battletoads are just the most awesome thing ever, and then they start flying, and then they, <laughs> like realized that they were in I forget what they were trapped in the whole time but they've been like trapped in like a pit for 23 years and just hallucinated this whole thing and then they had to go get regular jobs so like <laughs> the next stage after the first like chunk of beat em up stuff is in true Battletoads fashion completely different and it's like these sort of quick time events where one of you is like um, working at a like a, a an accounting firm, you have to press a button to like type on the keyboard, and then another button to like smack your computer to quote fix computer and stuff, and then another one is like you're doing massage therapy to somebody. Like uh, I think Pimple was a massage therapist now, so you have to like uh, turn the analog sticks and like mash on buttons to like do massages. To me. <laughs> it, was, it was really weird, but it was cool. I thought it was a neat game. Yeah, I, man, it it really does feel like something that should be on every platform, or at least on Switch. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm sure it would... I feel like on PlayStation, it would probably perform about as well as it did on Xbox. It's just, you know, the, the Nintendo lineage, the NES lineage of Battletoads is kind of like, this game's only real shot, I think. Yeah. But it was hmm. neat. I, I'm glad I finally played it, so that was pretty neat. Um, and then... Uh, is the it... Next, so, okay. would... Would you have been pissed if you spent money on it? Hmm. No, not at all. It, no? looks okay. about it, it looks exactly as good as the trailers made it look. So, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. If this was... I really don't know how much this game actually costs. It, but if it was like a $60 game, yeah, I'd... I don't know how I'd feel about that. But then again, I don't really know how long the game is or anything. But yeah. based on what I played, I was... I would be happy to purchase this game. If it showed up for like... Thirty dollars on Switch or whatever, I I would happily buy this game. You'd spend thirty on all right. I'd go as high as thirty for a quality beat 'em up like this. Yeah, again, okay. it's not Streets of Rage four, but what is you know? That's if Ninja very, Turtles very comes out at thirty bucks, you're damn right I'm paying thirty bucks for it. So sure, sure. Yeah, I'd I'd pay up to thirty for a solid brawler. And again, I don't know how how weird it gets from here because. 
You know, we had a, a whole quick time segment that was just all weird mini games. Then we had the turbo tunnel and we had beat 'em up stuff. So it's if it keeps doing weird stuff like the original game did, yeah, I'm all right. I'm happy I played it. It was neat. Cool. The other one that I played uh, is some more Street Fighter Five. Mm. Now, the last time I played Street Fighter Five was pretty close after it first came out. So they were still introducing all the characters through piecemeal DLC and whatnot, all those little fighter right. packs and stuff. Um, and I didn't I didn't like it, like, at all. Like, I played it at Mike's house. As a matter of fact, it's the only other time I'd played it. Um, Mike had told me recently that it got a lot better. He had all, you know, the full roster and everything's out now, except for the last, I think, DLC chunk is coming out now. But they've kind of fixed a lot of the issues with the original game. So I played... Um, Three sets of matches with him? Two? I can't remember what how many I played, but I played a couple of rounds with him, and I really enjoyed it. I still don't like the way it looks. Like, I don't like the art direction they took with it, but it is a very... It, it's, it felt like Street Fighter. It, it felt right when I was playing it. I played as Blanca, and I played as Guile. So, I mean, we must have only done two two matches, but yeah, I played as both of them, and it was Street Fighter. So that made I, me very, very happy. We've got to be getting close to, now that they're wrapping up the last of the DLC, we... We've got to be getting close to Street Fighter VI, I would imagine. Maybe? I mean, it depends on how long they just want this game to sit after they've done the last DLC. Mm. I'm still like... It's been out for years, though, right? Yeah. Like, four It's been out for a long time, but they've been keeping it, like, regularly updated and whatnot. Sure. So they'll probably, after this one, they'll probably do, like, Street Fighter V, you know... Super Street Fighter Five or something like that. Turbo you know, Championship Edition. Super. Now that they have all the DLC fighters, then they'll do one more revision. Probably let that sit for a couple of years, and then do something weird for Street Fighter Six. I'm just still bummed that it's it's a PlayStation exclusive. Like, yeah, Street Fighter Street Fighter shouldn't be platform specific. I just it shouldn't. It shouldn't. I mean, it it shouldn't. I mean, it never has been. Right. I mean. It came to Super Nintendo first, but then it showed up on Genesis not that long after. And but you know, didn't it was, didn't it only show up on Genesis as the the Turbo edition, or was there a regular edition no, there too? Was, well, there was World Warrior, and then Genesis got Special Champion Edition. Then Special, Super the Nintendo got of. Turbo, and then both simultaneously got Super. Right. Okay. Okay. And then and then you got uh, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Dream God bless and DLC. Yeah, right. Just, <laughs> you know, like honestly, God bless DLC. Never thought I'd so get to that money. point, but <laughs> that fucking sentence right there that just pushed me over the edge. <laughs> God damn it! Because I bought them all. Like fucking chump. Same here. <laughs> like a like a dick. God, Street Fighter like, 2 Turbo was so expensive, too. Oh, I know. You better believe I bought that one, and then I bought Supers. I just had to have them. Had to. How, you couldn't get the other characters any other way. I wasn't yeah. going to play the old shit. I wanted to be T-Hawk, damn it. Give me that DJ. <laughs> Give me that DJ. Give me that Max Faye Long. out. <laughs> Give me Bruce Lee. I love Fucking, Faye Long. Oh, Faye Long's great. I mean, he's not. He's a terrible character, but, <laughs> oh, <he's laughs> but I great. loved him. I loved Fei Long. Oh, he's great. That that kick, he had. Oh, he had such the good dragon stuff. kick. That yeah, that dragon kick that was all flamey and whatnot, and that yeah. little triple forward punch thing. No, nah, man, Fei Long was great. I got really good with him in Street Fighter Two. I love Fei Long. <laughs> anyway, um, I know, sorry, sorry. I just needed need to jump into that. But so so I played those games. <laughs> but then we went to Digital Press. I haven't been to Digital Press in years. And it's like my favorite retro game store, so I got to just be around a bunch. I mean, other of other games. than the Stone Age Gamer. Well, I'm mean, Stone I, Age Gamer is like five hours away. It's my favorite yeah, but retro I mean, video but game it's store. Our favorite. That's obtainable. Oh, okay, that's fair. It's your <laughs> favorite fair. in New Jersey. It's my favorite within several hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. Just uh, the boss is listening, Chris. You gotta <laughs> fucking fib a little bit. Gotta stretch well, I, the troop modifiers, Chris. Modifiers. Modifiers. You're married. I used to you live right by. The, yeah. <laughs> Come on. I used to live right by Digital Press. I love that place, and it was really nice to go back there again. Um, so Mike a while ago got a bunch of games, like a bunch of Atari games, for free, and he mm -hmm. asked me if any of them were worth anything, and I was like, 
these are the ones that I don't own and I would like them. So I brought <laughs> a whole box of stuff to trade with him. So for Atari 2600, I got from Mike on a trade. I got Dolphin, Sky Jinx, Fishing Derby, Pigs in Space, Sequest. in Space. That's right. Sequest and the big one right there that actually trade made an even trade for a, co- a spare copy of Secret of Mana that I have because... Because of me. course you do. <laughs> uh, track and field for Atari 2600. Oh, shit. It's one of the more expensive 2600 games out there. It's kind of beat up, but it's it was there. Uh, and then we did, uh, for 7800, I got Karateka, Donkey Kong Jr., Tower, Toppler, Hat Trick, and Xevious. Nice. So I'm feeling pretty good about that stack. But then we went to Digital Press, and uh, I bought um, I bought just a bunch of garbage. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> A stack of garbage. I mean, like, seriously, this is Oscar the Grouch singing I Love Trash. Just absolute trash. First, it was, since Mike didn't get to come to my birthday party, he wanted to buy me something digital press, so he bought me a boxed copy of Super Super Play Action Football for Super Nintendo. <laughs> which is delightful. That is uh, delightful. And then I was like, all right, so I have this shelf behind me. Um, that has my DS games on it, and it was three games away from being full. So, like, everything's you got, full. You gotta get la- three games. I So I found the three cruddiest games I could find. <laughs> um, let me, uh, oh, let me see what they are. Uh, ah, crap cakes. All right, I'll just, hold on a second. I gotta take my headphones off because I can't reach. So, so, all right, I can't hear you right now. I'm gonna go get these games. I just gotta get them off of my shelf here. And these are these are masterworks, okay? <laughs> these are the good stuff. Where's the third one? The uh, high quality shit. Uh, bu, bu, bu. This is what he's getting. This is oh, riveting. My God. Oh, there it is. Oh, this yeah. is so good. All right, getting my headphones back on so Guys I can hear you lucky. again. Okay, so ah, uh, Chris, you missed it. We had a bunch of callers. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I fucking I couldn't make any bagels. I didn't even know what was going on. Son just of a left bitch! <laughs> you can't take customer calls in the middle of Phil's. <laughs> what happened? All right, what All right. these know? these are these are fantastic. All right, so for a dollar ninety nine, I got a oh. copy of Wappy Dog. Oh, Wappy Dog! This uh is is God a toy tie in apparently. It is there it was, now. Like, a robotic dog toy and i might try to track this thing down because when i cataloged it it said that the complete in box with the dog goes for about five dollars <laughs> oh all right I'll buy a robot dog for five bucks all right now now we have um now that was from activision okay so now we have from dsi games um for 3.99 and this was a little bit pricey but when i tell you the title i think you'll agree that it was worth the price <laughs> this is championship pony <laughs> yep. yep Experience that was worth- the excitement of competing in exciting three-day events across six different countries. Can you test yourself in some of the toughest events worldwide? I I don't know that I can. But I know that I should. Ex- it's it, the excitement of competing in exciting three-day events. <laughs> How exciting! That is that is a well-written sentence. It is. It was just. I mean. <laughs> Uh, how could I have said no? You and can't. then you get... Clearly, you is, couldn't have. How do you top Championship Pony and Wappy Dog? Well, you get the video game adaptation from Red Wagon Games, the original Christmas classic, Santa Claus is Coming to Town for Nintendo DS. Mm-hmm. Guess how much I paid for this classic? Too much. Six bucks? <laughs> Two ninety nine. Two. Oh, you got a fucking deal. I'll I take did. it all back. From Kringle to Claws, now you can help Chris Kringle Chris Kringle bring toys back to Sombertown and see how some of our favorite holiday traditions came to be. Oh my, I am very excited to, to try this game. I'm going to wait till Christmas, though, so it's nice and festive. But yeah, man. Man, I really, I really want to put together... I might, I might get, um, get working on an RPG maker thing of making like a fucking good christmas game like a good santa claus rpg get, <laughs> like get that on is, it, man that is something ser- seriously overlooked in because we just we just got um uh a fucking rpg maker mv or whatever i don't know what that's supposed to i'm is it roman numerals i have no idea 
We just we got it for fun. My mother fucker. We just got it for. Don't laugh for, at that. That was terrible. No, that was great. <laughs> That's how tired I am, Chris. I'm going to let you get away with motherfucker. Um, <laughs> we got it for Penny because she came down and she was like, "So I have an idea for like a weird horror game. Can I get RPG Maker?" And I was like, "I mean, I'll talk to some people." And uh, and I talked to some people and we got uh, we got RPG Maker and she's working on it. So, you know, I have it now, so I don't have an excuse to not make a good fucking uh, uh, Santa Claus RPG, man. I think you should do it. I might. But, uh, but I didn't... With I all didn't, the free time yeah. that I have. Let me get on top of that with all that free time I don't have. <laughs> with the book I'm writing as well. So I didn't That's actually get thing. to the real cream of the crap that I bought. Oh, I shit. Didn't get to, there's, it gets, it, the, the barrel goes lower. The real, um, the real Macho Man Randy Savage of it all, which is a cream of the crop reference that you don't get because you hate fun. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. Because I'm me, and this is, a, this is a video game store that occasionally has it, I had to go looking for CDI games. Of and course. And you better believe they had two CDI games I didn't have. Of course. They had a couple more that I did already have, which made me sad. <laughs> but I'm, I'm always, I feel I'm contractually obliged to, uh, uh, obligated to buy any CDI games that I find for a reasonable price that I don't already have. And uh, I got these for $5 each. I got Sticky Bear Math. Oh, God. Man. Uh, classic. Classic well, see, Sticky I Bear. I already had Sticky Bear reading, so <laughs> I needed to... I needed Why to is he Sticky? I don't know. Maybe all the honey. Is it but, all? Are you sure it's not dancing bear math? That's a whole other joke for ooh. other people. Well, here's the thing. See, now I thought I was completing the set, right? Because I have sticky bear reading. Now I have sticky bear math, and I'm like, all right. Well, I, now now I have it all, but I don't. It, it, this is actually a trilogy. <laughs> um, Son of a bitch. Because I was looking through the manual, as you do, and like you do. I, where did I find it? It's it said. Oh my god, this game looks amazing. <laughs> oh, what was I looking at? Where I oh, it was. I was actually. It wasn't. It wasn't the manual. I was looking it up when I was cataloging it, and I saw that there was a third Sticky Bear educational game. Let me see if I can find it listed in here. Kids. Oh my goodness. Uh, Moses bound for the promised land. Gonna have to track that one down. Certainly. Um, Sticky Bear reading. Oh, this one doesn't have the other one listed. It's I bet like... you there's going to be a new version on the Amico. <laughs> yes. Snap. Now nah, it's just going to be a. <laughs> it's just going to be a, a port. A port. With an enhanced port because it's got to be. Original. It won't be Moses, but it's got. It'll be Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> no, it's it's going to be Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh boy, I can't remember what the third one is, but there's another Sticky Bear game out there for CDI. I gotta track that one down. But this is my favorite. This is this is wonderful here. This is uh, a great day at the races <laughs> for CDI. Was it play bet win? It's like a real racetrack. <laughs> you ready for this? This is this is art. Okay. okay. Welcome to the track. <laughs> Enjoy thoroughbred horse racing at its finest. Learning, betting basics, and a strategy from the experts. Pick winners using the handicapping methods of the pros to evaluate the past performances of 500 thoroughbreds, plus a hot tip on each horse from longtime racing enthusiast Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney! <laughs> Or simply go with your hunches. Bet, win, place, or show, plus exacta, quinella, or trifecta. Start with 2000 in funny money and watch your bankroll grow. Or shrink. Don't worry, you can go to the bank for more cash at any time. <laughs> oh, good. Each race is packed with the excitement of actual horse racing video and oh. called by well-known track announcer Trevor Denman. <laughs> also <luck>. Mickey Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> Have a Sorry. great day at the races. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't also Mickey Rooney. I, this is this is amazing. I that cannot amazing. wait to plug this in and try it out. A great day I, at the race. It's just gambling simulator. <laughs> I mean... I love gambling. I love it. That's why I don't do it. 
because I find I'm a degenerate, just like uh, dragging me out of the casinos. Um, I also really <laughs> love horse racing. I cannot imagine I would enjoy that version of either of those things. <laughs> Sounds like a terrible way to experience both. I mean, I'm looking at screenshots. I also love Mickey Rooney. I, most of this just appears ways. to be menu navigation and like <laughs> bland menu navigation. I think horse racing is really cool. I'm not really big on gambling, but I mean, I'm looking through the manual. I've got one picture of the menu. That does not look like a video over a horse racing. It just looks like <laughs> CDI graphics. And then everything else in here is just menus. It's just menu screens. So this is just pretending to waste money. <laughs> the game. I mean, maybe that's what I need. I don't know. That maybe. might that might scratch a particular itch. I cannot wait to get this up and running. Like, seriously, <sighs> one of these days... I'm going to get my uh, my streaming thing set up, and I'm going to go on Twitch, and I'm just going to stream every CDI game I have. Um, it's going to be a good day. Just for posterity. Day, days, <laughs> Dan. Days. How many I mean, CDI games am I up to now? Let's see. Too here. many? No such thing, sir. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to restream those Zelda games. I don't know. Maybe I will. I'm a whore. You definitely will. I definitely will. What What's my CDI collection looking like these days? Let's see. Report... Thank you, Game Eye. This this episode of the Sony Gamer Podcast was brought to you by our by. good friends over at Game Eye. Game Eye. Game Eye. When you've got <laughs> your eyes the on the games podcast or something, I don't know. Uh, boy, why is CDI so low on this list? I have sixteen CDI. No, I only have sixteen cataloged CDI games. I have a couple of that didn't show up in the uh, the database. But I mean, seriously, we got to spend some quality time with Sticky Bear Math and Sticky Bear Reading. I can't <laughs> wait to play Surf City. I also have a game that's not cataloged in here called Shark Attack. Ooh. I mean, it, it just looks amazing. Voyeur. Treasures of the Smithsonian, Dan. I mean, this is just walking around and then like, hey, look at that. That's cool. This is the real winner, though. Uh, I picked this up at a, what was it, AVGC? Maybe a few years ago. It's called Golf My Way. I think it's uh, five discs. <laughs> it's five discs? Is it Frank Sinatra Golf? Did no, it? No, you know what? I, I, I actually need to find this out right now. It's right on the other side of the room. I'll be right back. Don't take oh. any calls while I'm gone, okay? <laughs> Don't make any right bagels. Back. Don't, <laughs> Don't make any bagels without me. Here I go. <laughs> I'm going to go get Golf My Way. <laughs> you really... This is the second time he's left this episode. This does not bode well for the rest of the time. We really should have like a hotline or something. I mean, this guy looks important. Whoever set this up. golfer guy is. I should probably know who it is. Know who this is. I don't have my headphones in yet. All right, come on your headphones so I can hear Dan. Okay, I'm back. Now this got some 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 golfing dude on the front. He looks very serious about what he's doing. This is Golf My Way five disc set. Oh, it's Jack Nicholas. Of course, I should know that guy. <laughs> It's got some guy golfing on the front. <laughs> there was a 50-50 chance it was going to be Jack Nicholas. Yeah, well, who was the other 50 you would go with? Uh, Arnold Palmer? There you go. That is a yeah! name, Chris. Well done. Well done. Golden Bear. Oh, Lee, Lee Trevino, right? Lee Trevino's Lee putting Trevino's. challenge? Yeah. From The Simpsons? <laughs> who was a... Uh, Pete Jacobson's Golden Shower Golf, was that it? (laughs) 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 Alright, so let's see, we've got Golf My Way here. I got one disc and then discs two, three, four, and five. I don't have a manual for this one, though. That's a bummer. It would have been on the front of this this first CD here from Digital Video. (laughs) In, let's see, this part one... Oh, it says what they are. All right, so part Why one is... is five it, discs? Well, all right. Disc one is introduction, before you swing, and the full swing fundamentals. Let's see. Uh, disc, oh, so like, is this is this just this dude teaching you how to golf? I think that's what this is, yeah. <laughs> this dude. Is this just Jack Nicholas? <laughs> you know, this teach, dude. I'm sure it's not Jack Nicholson in there. Or Jack Nicholson. I'm <laughs> sure it's not Jack Nicholson. <laughs> oh, these discs are out of order. Oh, my God. Um, but, like, it's got to be just some fucking jabron in there, like, teaching you, hey, right, friends. 
Let's see. So disc today, two, more important full swing factors, the short game, <laughs> oh. Jack Grout on learning golf, and credits. But then we, that, so it's... part one is on discs one and two. Then we have part two starting on disc three. This is introduction, the second half of golf. Ball striking basics reviewed, getting ready, and driving strategies. Boom. Uh, so stay oh, in the right wow. hand lane. Part two is pretty pretty beefy. It's the rest of it. It's all part two. So let's see. Disc four is approach play, around the green, and putting. And then the mm. grand finale on disc five, trouble shots in the wind, trouble shots in the rough, trouble shots, more stroke savers, practice, and credits. This is amazing. <laughs> I want to stream this whole thing, and I'm so bummed it doesn't have the manual. I, what does it need a manual for if it's just some schmuck teaching you how to golf poorly? Some schmuck. <laughs> I gotta know I, if it's actually him. I have to there's know. There's no way. There's no way they had enough money to get Jack Nicholas to come on there and do that bullshit. I mean, it, it seems to be, like, the back of it seems to be signed by him. Not like I, for real. Like it's the the back of the box is written from his perspective. I mean, if it were dwarf on golf, we'd have a whole other thing happening right now. I tell because you, on, that's how on the break, I'm going to plug this in, and <laughs> I'm going to throw this in there because my CDI is hooked up. Won't take any time at all, and I'm going to I'm going to let you know for sure. All Let's right, I, you know I. I can't let you know for sure. You know why? Because if this... If you gonna, don't know if it's actually Jack Nicholas. I don't know what he sounds like. <laughs> it could be anyone talking. Hello, this is Jack Nicholas. I don't it's, know if that's not how he like talks. Him. No, that is. That was, a, that was an eerily accurate <laughs> Jack Nicholas impersonation. It's going to be Captain Lou Albano. They, could, they couldn't get him for the Mario Hotel Mario, but they got him for this. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> what is this show about this week? I, God damn it. We are in the weeds. Man. <laughs> well, I, I, guess I, I guess I'll finish off what I've been doing before we get to you. Uh, let's see. Um, the Axiom Verge 2 is still freaking awesome. That's good. Yeah, it's it's great. I just got the ability to blow myself up. That's fun. It's awesome. And, like, it doesn't hurt. You just explode and then reform, but you can, like, take out walls and stuff. So I, I figured cool. I was going to find ways. If there are these bombs around, and I figured I'm going to get something that's going to let me carry these bombs around. But instead, I got an ability that just lets me be the bomb, <laughs> <laughs> which was great. That is pretty great. I can't buy it yet. I can't, Chris. Got too much going on. I, the Psychonauts 2 comes out this week. Oh, right, and the reviews I, are killer on it. I, I, yeah, I, I can't I can't do... I bought fucking Momodora last week. I've been playing more of that. I haven't started Raji. I can't get Axiom Verge because I'm not even going to fucking look at it. Yeah, no, so I'm just play. I'm just not, you know, I so I'll wait. Did I go over the Bubble Bobble 4 Friends stuff with you? Yes. How oh, there's yes, all that extra we content. About that. Yeah. All right, good. We played Let's a little not bit rehash more of it. that shit. Yeah, no, we played a little bit more of it. Uh, Ellie seems to have moved on with her life, so I haven't been able to play any more of it since. <laughs> I, uh, I, she, little children are fickle. They are, and John really wants to play more of it too. I played a little bit more uh, Skyward Sword this afternoon. The game's great, uh, and we also played the WarioWare demo. I tried it with Mike first. Oh, nice! And then I played it with John this afternoon. It's freaking great. Did you try it? No. It's fantastic. You know I mean, me. it's a free demo. I'm sure. Again, with all the free time I don't have. <laughs> I was serious afraid. MLB commitments, Chris. Of course, of course. I had my doubts. I mean, I, I was sure it was going to be good, but I looked at it and said, I think we talked about it, where it's instead of, you know, pressing a button to do a thing, you're a character moving around on the screen. And I thought... Yeah. I felt a little weird about that, which is one of the reasons I didn't pre-order it. That, and I was sure Ellie wasn't going to be interested enough in it, and sure, you know, dropping another sixty bucks on something that I'm probably not going to get to play a lot of myself um, seemed like a bad idea. I'm yeah, kind of yeah. questioning my decision. Like, the demo is really fun. Um, so the way it works is you have these different characters, and they all do different things, but mm -hmm. they're all interchangeable at the same time. 
or at least they kind of have to be. So you start off with just Wario, and he's got a jetpack, and he can move anywhere on the screen, and you press a button, and he does his little Wario Land shoulder charge. Neat. And then you unlock okay. the ninja guy, uh, the, the kung fu guy, and he basically controls like a regular platformer dude. Just He's on the ground, you press a button to jump. That's what he does. So everything is move and one button. That's, that's everything. Except the third guy doesn't move at all. He's totally stationary, but he can shoot in any direction. And the way you get around is you shoot these different rings, and they can, like, he'll go like a grapple beam up to those rings, and then they might move him around or something like that. So if you're in a stage, and you have that guy, and you got to move around, sometimes it can be difficult. But other stages, he's really good at. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you get other other characters, like you get this alien who's in a UFO, and he can suck things up. You get uh, the, the ninja girls, Kat and Anna, except for if you're player one, you can only fire to the right, and if you're player two, you can only fire to the left. Um, and then you get Mona, she's on a motorcycle that's always moving, except when you throw your boomerang. But when you throw the boomerang, she stays still, but then you're controlling the boomerang, and you can't move until you recall the boomerang. So everyone's got these mm. these interesting movements, unique movements, and limitations. And as you play through two-player, because I haven't tried it single-player, uh... And I assume the single player way is the same games the same way. It randomly chooses which character you're going to be. So the games are all randomized, but so is who you are. So like you'll get to do like the tw- the tweeze the armpit hair thing that's been in all the, the trailers and stuff, <laughs> and you do it as Wario, and you just like shoulder charge him, and that's good. But then you yeah. get to do that as the alien, and you've got to fly over there and suck up the uh, the the armpit hairs, or you <laughs> you be the the laser beam guy, and you got to like shoot shoot all the hairs off. So, like, you have to, they give you a split second to be like, all right, this is who you are. Kind of like in the, the Wii WarioWare game, where they yeah. show you, like, hold the Wii remote this way. So, instead of, like, hold the Wii remote this way, it's like, this is the character you are. And then it says, um, you know, it's Splatoon. And you have to, uh, you know, like, the finish of a Splatoon match where they show the map. Yeah. And all, the, all the, the paint on it. You have to choose which side won. So, you have to get your character to the side that won before the two cats are done counting up the winners. Huh. That's neat. Yeah, it's genius. The whole I thing's like genius. I I absolutely love it. Every every micro game we played in the demo was a winner, and every time you play through it, you unlock a new character. So like you'll oh, play cool. through a round and then you unlock a character and then it does a little commercial for stuff that you can unlock in the game. And then after you play as that character, you get another one and then you get another little demo of stuff inside the game. And once you've done all that, then you can go to full random mode. So you can either play, you pick three different characters that'll randomly rotate between or the entire cast and it'll just rotate through everybody. Hmm. It looks like it's got a lot of content in it and it's really fun. It is any doubts I had about it feeling like WarioWare because you're moving characters around were completely thrown to the wind as soon as I started playing it. It's 100% WarioWare. It's great. I love it. Well, I'm very happy. That's awesome. So what have you been up to, Dan? I Fucking nothing. There was so much wrestling this week, Chris. I planned on doing more. Like, I played, I played some more of that Momodora uh, game. It's really good. I think you would dig it a lot. It's a fun little Metroidvania romp. Like, I think I'm, I don't know, I'm like two or three hours into it, so I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm about halfway done. Um, some really, really, uh, just really nice visuals in the game. They've done, there's a really good, um, it's got like a re- just a really good personality, a really good feel to it. Uh, and I like it quite a bit. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. But then there, there's been just a bunch of sh- stuff in the show that I've been trying to finish up uh, for the fourth inning program, uh, because or the fifth inning program, because the sixth inning program, which is the big 650,000 experience point uh, track that you go on throughout the month, um, that refreshes on Thursday, and I think I'm 70,000 experience points away, uh, so I have some work to do. But to make it a little bit easier... And coincident, this is one of the things I love about this game, right? So Miguel Cabrera, I I know he's your favorite baseball player, Chris. But for Without people who don't, for people who don't, well, that know and Jack Nicholas, Ma- I mean, <laughs> Jack Nicholson, favorite baseball player. Nobody um, swings a bat like Jack Nicholas. <laughs> everybody says that. <laughs> Give me the bat, Marge. Give me the bat. 
<laughs> you stay in here until you're not crazy. Ooh, peas would be good. Anyway, this <laughs> episode's so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> go crazy? Don't mind, mind if I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, anyway, so for anybody who doesn't know, Miguel Cabrera um, is a dude who used to be really, really good at baseball. For anybody and, who doesn't know, The Simpsons was an animated team. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, and he started his career uh, playing for the, at that time, the Florida Marlins. And he was, I, he was a fucking phenom, man. He was like this, this, just this kid who, like, he debuted at like 18 or 19 years old and he was fucking smacking home runs all over the place. And he was like this, a crazy good third baseman. Um, played a little bit of outfield as well, won a championship with the Marlins, and like the Marlins did every time they won a championship, they immediately traded everybody the very next year. So Cabrera uh, got traded along with Dontrell Willis up to the Detroit Tigers. He's been a Detroit Tiger ever since. Uh, He's gotten older and wider, uh, and as he has gotten older and wider, he's moved over to first base. He's Miggy. He's great. Um... He's like a fucking elder statesman of baseball now. Um, and yesterday, it was either yesterday, either Sunday or Saturday, he hit his 500th home run, which is something that he is now the 29th human to hit 500 or more home runs in professional baseball, which is crazy. Um, because uh, baseball's really hard, so that's really impressive. There's been... Katie and I were talking about this this weekend. We were talking about stats and shit um, while I was playing some of the show. Um, there's been a little over 18,000 different players in Major League Baseball history. This guy is now the 29th out of those 18,000-plus uh, to hit 500 home runs. So that's really cool. Um, today... The show dropped a uh, three-stage program to play through key moments of Miguel Cabrera's career, and at the end of it, when you accumulate the points for the for the different um, objectives and stuff, you get a, an insanely juiced-up uh, fucking Miguel Cabrera card to commemorate his 500th home run, and it like it was instant. You know, he hit the home run yesterday. Today, boom, here's this content. And what I love about that so much is that it it shows this is a group of developers that's sitting there going, okay, season's about to start. What are the milestones we got to be looking out for? Because we've if we've got big things coming up, we want to make sure that we have stuff to deliver to our player base um, when and if those things happen. And that's such... It, it's just a refreshing kind of thing to happen in the world right now of here you go here's this super cool thing to do and at the end of it you get an incredibly good card free of charge like this isn't paid dlc it's not whatever it's just dude hit his 500th home run here's a whole thing to do about it which is i don't know i think that's super cool i think you're super cool (laughs) (laughs) ah You were talking yeah. last week. You saying something about sometimes I'll go on these, uh, I'll start saying stuff, and you just won't have any idea how to respond. Yeah, it's you, typically yeah. how I feel with you I know. in baseball. I know, I know. <laughs> just like That's... I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I mean, I tried to tie it back into the larger overall point that here was a video game developer not nickel and diming <laughs> you to death, but actually just providing high quality content because you've already purchased the game that's really awesome pure insanity you know? how are they ever going to survive on that I, right <laughs> how are they going to survive on the goodwill of repeat customers every right? year games are seem... too expensive to make they, they are they can't afford to make them this way that's why they need the extra money <laughs> so <laughs> i mean <laughs> So that was that was a really fun thing that happened. A really shitty thing that happened was that I woke up Saturday morning um, 
I went to turn on my TV and it was like, nah, fam, I'm not going to do that for you. I was like, all right, that sucks. Let me uh, let me call the technical support here. Maybe something's going on with the uh, with the Roku and whatever. Um, this is like a smart TV and whatever. So I called up the technical thing and uh, talking to the guy, and he was like, so I need you to do this. I was like, yeah, I did that already. He was like, well, do it again. It's like, okay, I can see where this is going. This is going to be very helpful. I was like, nope, didn't work. He was like, okay, well, we're going to do this. I was like, oh, you want me to reset the TV by holding the button underneath while it's unplugged for 30 seconds? <laughs> it was like, I did that already. He was why don't we do it again? <laughs> why don't we, sir? Why don't we? And then we did another thing, and it didn't work. He was like, yeah, I mean, you're pretty much fucked, man. And I was like, I appreciate your honesty, sir. Thank you for not trying to string me along or bullshit me. He was like, I don't know, you can try and take it to a repair shop or something, or you can try and order a motherboard or a backlight, because without being able to diagnose it, we can't, I can't tell you which of those two things it is, but it's, it's one of those two things. And I was like, that's all right. I'll take the 65-inch TV off the wall, throw it away, and go get the 55-inch TV from downstairs and live <laughs> in poverty, I guess. <laughs> 55 oh, inch non HDR <laughs> bullshit that I have to exist with now until I so I have to buy another fucking TV, Chris. That it's reminds me, I uh, so I'm at Mike's house and we played Battletoads on his computer, right? Because he has it set up for he streams from his Xbox all the time, so he has it all set up on his computer. Right. So when I woke up in the next morning, I was like, "All right, well, I just want to fart around with this PlayStation Five for a bit, and while well, waiting for everybody to wake up." So I, I turned on some Mega Man and I was playing, and everything was blue, like <laughs> everything's blue. Like the TV no longer displayed white; it displayed blue. Nice. That's fun. So I went into the settings to try and fix it, and, and no, no, it was just no, it was just was broken. Like there's something wrong with this television. Yeah. So I told Mike about it. It was like, yeah, and you got to say this. You got to say this in front of Lexi, his wife. You got to say this in front of her because you know I mentioned it. My somebody else mentioned it before, and that somebody else is you know typically full of garbage. I think so. Like <laughs> she didn't she didn't believe him, and like yeah. she wouldn't listen to just him. So we're sitting at the breakfast table, and she's like. Mike, you gotta shave your you gotta shave your beard. I'm not saying you gotta shave it off. I'm saying you just gotta clean it up. You look scraggly as all hell. And I'm looking at him like, you know what, Lexi, I agree with you. Mike, you do need to shave. But I also say you need a new TV. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. She said, Okay, we'll go get a new TV. <laughs> God damn it. That didn't work for Tiff. I was like, we need to go get a new TV, and she went, Yeah, okay. <laughs> we already have a new TV at home. Yeah, so we went out and bought a new TV, which was really fun. I got, went to go help him pick out a new TV at BJ's. It was great. That is exciting. Yeah. And then we hooked yeah, it up know. and we played Street Fighter Five on it. It was great. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. Times. I'm I, I'm not rushing out to buy a new set right now um, because I do have, like, legitimately, I just went and got the 10-inch smaller TV. still a fucking 55-inch television. Yeah, you know that's, I mean? that's, that's enough TV. That's enough TV. It just it looks so comically small on my wall. <laughs> because I got used to the 65-inch television up there, yeah. and the 65-inch was HDR, and, like, this one yeah. isn't. So that kind of sucks, but, like, whatever. That's fine. Um, but I'm, I'm waiting a little bit to see. I might even, like, honestly be that guy and try to push it to, like, November and see if I can't find some sort of Black Friday something or other. Because... Oh, that's the way you do it. Because I want to go bigger. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I want... A seventy-five inch. I would try. I was trying to talk Tiff into, um, because I measured, and we can get like, the the biggest TV right now that's somewhat affordable is, for whatever reason, it's eighty-two inches, um, and that would fit on my wall. Um, she wasn't going for it though. She said eighty-two is too big. Seventy-five is fine. I was like, whatever you size queen, and I walked away from her in Target. <laughs> stormed away called my wife the size queen in public and walked away um, <laughs> so but I mean that's the thing right if I'm gonna go bigger I should probably wait right like I oh, probably should cause cause I, you're gonna get it for way cheaper like Black I'm, Friday I'm going to I mean 
Yeah. Uh, is and it, black? Well, maybe around the start of the football season, too. I mean, maybe. Because, like, that's the other fucked up thing about this, Chris, is, like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, I got to wait until Black Friday. Oh, wait, that's three months away. Yeah. That's not far away. That's not. Like, it'll be, it'll be Black Friday tomorrow, the way our fucking lives go. So, anyway. Um, but I didn't play any other games, uh, really, this weekend because there was just too much wrestling on. There was just too much. It was fucking... Um, NXT was last night, was Sunday night. Um, which was a mi- Walter and Ilya Dragunov had a match. They just beat the shit out of each other for 30 minutes. It was fucking incredible. Um, it was probably my favorite match of the weekend. Uh, Survivor Series was Saturday. And the big thing was Friday night, Chris. After seven years, fucking CM Punk walked out in AEW... He is signed to AEW. He is going to be a full-time competitor in AEW. And I fucking, like, I almost teared up a little bit, you know? Because he was... His promo that he cut, it was... Here's a... He's a professional wrestler, right? He doesn't Uh owe anybody anything. You know, he really doesn't, like... But he got up there, and he's cutting a promo, and he was, like... The whole crowd is, CM Punk, CM Punk. Everybody's fucking freaking out chanting his name and shit, and he's like, I hear you guys, I've heard you for the last seven years, but I I need to, he was like, the most important thing I'm going to say to you is that I hope you understand that I couldn't I couldn't come back and work, I couldn't come back until I was mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally healthy and I couldn't go back to the place that made me fucking sick in the first place. So I hope you understand why I've been gone for so long. And I hope you can understand that I, ha- I wasn't just sitting at home being a dick, basically. And it was like, man, like, what an awesome thing for, like, wrestling, wrestling works when it's mostly true. And then they work in a little bit of carny bullshit at the end of it. You know what I mean? Like that that's when wrestling is great. Is because especially now in this era of wrestling where we all know what's going on, you know what I mean? Like we know that these are worked fights and whatever. Um so the more truth that you can get out there, the better the overall product is. And it was fucking perfect. It was great. So there's a lot of wrestling this week. And then there was Dynamite on Wednesday and fucking Dark on Thursday. It was so much, Chris. It was so much. My TV broke and now I'm sad. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Puzzle and Dragons, the show. Yu-Gi-Oh! collab came back today. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. I don't know, there's... Uh, I was only gonna, I was going to roll uh, either five rolls or I was going to stop when I got Exodia, which is one of the new cards... That they put into the Yu-Gi-Oh machine today. I was gonna say that that sounds Yu-Gi-Oh to me. Yeah, right, Exodia, and uh, I got Exodia in my. Let me see. I'm looking right now. Riveting radio as I look through my pad. Uh, third roll. So, like, all right. I guess I'll only roll three times because I rolled really hard the last time the machine came around, and they didn't add all that much new to it. But this guy was apparently pretty good from what I've seen of Japanese videos, so I was like, all right, I'll give him a shot. So anyway, that's where we are, Chris. It's the long and well, the short of it. I think let's do I, some I, commercials. Yeah, let's do some commercials, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, including the Super Nintendo anniversary, because, you know, we do things. We do. <clears throat> You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content, available now from our partners and Geekade.com. First up, on this week's episode of This Week's Episode, the gang heads back to the news desk after a long time away, and boy, has the news been piling up. There's fucking letters everywhere, there's old reel-to-reel tapes, somebody dropped off a cassette. What the fuck am I going to do with this? 
Before they got into all that, though, they catch up with what's been going on with one another. Angie has a new comic book creation in the world. Karen raves about some dark comedy. Chris chats about a bad batch of something. And Evan asks the question, what if? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? For all your TV needs and more, tune in to this week's episode, episode 236, <coughs> Almost Barfing. I don't it's not where I saw all that, that going, but... I don't even remember what that's a reference to. <laughs> uh, next, today, the day we're recording this, is the 30th anniversary of the Super NES here in the U.S., and with any new system launch comes launch titles. The fast-moving Mode 7 Extravaganza F-Zero was among the console's launch day releases, and it's a memorable one. Having spawned several sequels, cameos in other Nintendo games, and even an anime series, Nintendo's futuristic racing game is still an awesome experience, and it has some killer music to go along with its excellent track design and lightning-fast speed. Strap yourself into your hover vehicle and listen to Waveback episode 135, F-Zero. I just... <laughs> okay. Uh, just give me a new F-Zero game, man. I don't feel like that's a lot to ask. I don't even need a new one. I, yeah, I'll take the... I'll take, like, a best of. Do like yeah. you do with the Mario Kart tracks. You know what I'm talking Fuck, about? Like, man. every Mario Kart game's got... Here's a bunch of the old tracks, just all redone in modern style. Just do that. Give me a whole F-Zero game of old-ass tracks. Doesn't need to be fancy. i buy it. For a dollar. Finally, Biff. The man, the myth, the legend. The man, the biff, the legend. <laughs> the man, the biff. I was going to say the biff. I thought it was a bit too obvious, but no, hearing it out loud, it's funny. The legend is a character of exquisite taste, much like myself. So when he chills, he does so with only the grandest of Ariana's. So yes, as you may have guessed, the biff we're speaking of is indeed chilling with Ariana Grande. In less exciting news, Ryan's got a bunch of new Switch games. Really, who doesn't? I mean, the Switch does, in fact, sell games, after all. And Nintendo Switch has said, games! Nintendo said so! What you really need to know about is, how can a domino stunt turn into an intervention, and what, pray tell, is said intervention for? If you would like to know what any and all of this quite frankly, inane babble means, give a listen to Weekend Rental episode 106, The Gamers Knock em Down. For all this great content and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on geekade.com. The grandest of Ariana's. back it's time for the 10 20 30 40 uh, in case you are new to this show welcome and why uh, hey <laughs> hey how you doing you find us thanks for coming uh, <laughs> size we queens? do this yeah a bunch of size queens we do this <laughs> once every month uh and it is uh is where we look back at important notable releases from 10 20 30 and 40 years ago this month so we're talking about august named after augustus augustus gloop it was a real prick, because otherwise, you know, the calendar would, like, match up with numbers and stuff. And now it's it like, no. July Augustus and August, Loop. they don't even... Augustus Loop. A great anyway, big sorry. greedy nincompoop. That was, That's like, the, the best part of those thing. movies. Yeah. The only thing that was good about that weird travesty of a movie. I do... Yeah. I do kind of like when he yells mumbler at the little... at my TV... Yeah, all right. That was that was that was kind of funny. There yeah, were a couple of a nuggets, but that was it was, it was bad. not an okay movie. It was no. not okay. It's bad. <clears throat> bad bad. All right, let's see what was happening in August of 2011. 10 years ago. August is typically a great month. Uh, <laughs> I'm lying. Let's see. <laughs> Very uh, much well, so. okay, this was actually pretty cool. We got a uh, Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People episode 1 came out for Wii and Windows. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was definitely a little bit late, 
to be doing the uh, Homestar Runner shit. But, yeah. But a point know. and click adventure based on Homestar Runner, I'm in. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's not Teen Girl Squad, but I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, that that, that, that game made me happy. I never the finished ugly it. The one. <laughs> shit, so funny. <laughs> But I mean, like, those are 25 years old at this point, aren't they? <laughs> just, I, I, they're still funny, too. I, they, they are, but I mean, I just, I don't know who it the was market a, it was. It was a weird project to, to get off the ground at that at that stage. Yeah. But uh, I'm still glad they did it. I don't remember how yeah. many episodes it ran for, but, and that it was a WiiWare game of all things, and I no, don't think course. it's been ported to anything else. They should really put that game together and release it on something. I'm sure it's on an Android. That seems like something that's on Android. <laughs> or Ouya, maybe? I don't know. Well, let's yeah. see. The, play, the PlayStation 3 got No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise. <clears throat> was that, that was like the, the uh, remake of the first one, I think. Yeah. They beefed it up a little bit. Yeah. Spruced it up. A little, little spruce. It's nice now. We painted it. <clears throat> I mean, you know, No More Heroes is, is awesome. I've never finished a No More Heroes game, but... Uh, I appreciate them, and I wish I had the time to go through them. I hear three's three's pretty pretty good. Is that it, it's platinum or grasshopper? Grasshopper. Grasshopper. This is all fifty one. I feel very similarly about both of their games. I love them immensely. I don't ever feel compelled to finish them though. You know, I I, don't know. I do. I'm not, I'm not going to say I wasn't compelled to finish No More Heroes. It just it came out of a time where I didn't really have time to finish it sure and i never went back to it because you know i'm not going back to play wii games but they are both on switch now and uh and maybe the next time they go on sale i'll pick them up and add them to my limitless pile of games i'll never finish <laughs> let's see we got the 3d classics urban champion for some fucking reason <laughs> yeah that no swing and a miss it's not a bad game but no it's like the most bleh game of the Black Box series, and that got the full 3D remake treatment for this 3D Classics line. It just doesn't so make any good. sense. The 3D yeah. Classics line was great, and they they just they're they're trapped on 3DS forever because they're, apparently they were a whole shitload of work. Like, all right, maybe just do more like with the Kid Icarus instead of the crazy shit you did with a uh, Excite Bike and Urban Champion yeah. by like fully rendering the games from scratch. Like. Or, or maybe do just do don't do Urban Champion. <clears throat> right? Because <laughs> who's paying for that? Do a game that's going to sell, you pricks. Excite Bike made sense. Yeah. Like, Urban Champion? No. I mean, no. Outside of a couple of the sports ones, that's probably the worst. Shit, Gyromite would have been better. <laughs> 3D Classics Gyromite. Speaking that. of, real quick, somebody that I used to work with put up a post on Facebook. I don't check Facebook very of often, but in Divine Intervention, um, which is a really good Matthew Sweet song, by the way. Um, I happened to be scrolling past, and my friend Melissa posted up a thing, and she was like, I was cleaning out a bunch of shit, just found this. It's, a, it's an NES console. She was like, I, th I have the wires and another box of 10 games somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, I... Who wants it? And somebody posted, they were like, I don't know, I'll give you like 10 bucks for it. And he was like, I'm, I'm into old video games, I'll give you like 10 bucks. And I was like, Melissa, I'm fucking sell it to that prick. I could see right there, she took like a blurry ass picture too. I was like, but you don't, you don't have a ton of money right there, but I can see Popeye and Godzilla. It's like 45 bucks, 50 bucks right there. <laughs> don't fucking sell it to that asshole. She was like, alright, thank you so much, I'm gonna send you more pictures <laughs> like fuck you stranger on the internet don't try to rip my friend off that's fucked up our popeye game's dope anyway moving on sorry uh i don't know what else to move on to i don't see anything else of note for this. <laughs> i mean shin Megami tensei devil survivor overclocked for 3ds sure something called the baconing oh yeah that's some dumb shit they tried I mean, there's just there's they just failed, nothing but else they tried. here. Nothing else in August. Wow, August 2011 sucked. Yeah, that was terrible. I don't even have any weird shit to look at. I mean, like there's a couple of ports. Like Limbo came to Windows, and there was the Mortal Kombat arcade collection. No. Um, wow. No. 
20 years ago, Chris, what do you yeah, got? Yeah, let, let, let's fast forward to 20 Because we, we do actually have a legitimate one to talk about. We, we do. I mean, so let, but let's like, get there. Seriously, that was, that was that was bleak. We've, we've usually was, been able to pull out at least a couple of winners, but all right. So let's travel back to a sneaker. August 2001. N64 still, uh, still chiming in from time to time, giving us Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Yeah, I mean, it was a decent version of it, right? Oh yeah, it was it was pretty comparable to the PlayStation One. It was late, but what are you gonna do? You had to yeah. compress all that stuff into an N sixty four cart. Sound took a hit, visuals looked a little blurrier, but all in all, it's still Tony Hawk two. You're still looking at a slightly a less fun version of game. A, slightly less great version of a great game. Yeah. It's a it's a fucking great game. The PlayStation had I mean this probably about as impressive it only had three releases for playstation one granted ps2 was out by this point but still uh you had rayman brain games which was an extraordinarily ill-conceived what is it like a trivia rayman game or something yeah ill-conceived <laughs> was... why why uh, you can't even pull that shit off with really, a mascot like Mario. they were really trying to make rayman like a big big deal 20 years ago yeah, and, and he sucks. Really he sucks. I said it. I'm not I sure I'd I go said, that Chris. far, but I, I mean, yeah. No, he sucks. Bit. Nah, Rayman sucks fine. on toast. I like those Rayman Legends and, and whatnot. Those were those were good <clears throat> games. Though apparently Michelle Ancel is kind of a, a piece of shit. Apparently, but exactly. Yeah, you go back. Go back and play them again. Dripping with misogyny. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also had the double hitter of uh, Madden 2002 and Game Day 2002. You know, back when I mean, there was competition in the football scene. Good time. Good yeah. time. <laughs> Speaking of... Man, another sidetrack real quick. So, I don't know if you saw that um, Tops will no longer be making uh, MLB baseball cards. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, the, the Players Union... Um, and the uh, the league themselves uh, both decided not to renew their uh, their exclusivity with Tops, and they are going to Fanatics, hmm. which is a company that has never made sports cards before, um, but does make a lot of uh, d to varying degrees of quality uh, sports stuff. So the deal runs in like two, three more years or something like that. Because the the players' association is where they get the right to use the players' names and faces, and uh, that expires in like two years. And then in 2026 is when the MLB deal with Tops expires, so they could Tops could technically put out cards of blank faces with no names, um, but still have like Yankees right fielder. Just, like, have a picture of Aaron Judge's back or something like that, I guess. Which would be really weird. But they also announced today that Fanatics has acquired the player likenesses and team likenesses for the NBA as well, and they are working on the NFL. So I'm sure that's going to go well for everyone. <laughs> Exclusivity never fucks anything up. No, competition is, is so terrible. Yeah. Look at how great Madden has been. <clears throat> yeah, for the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. Ever since anyway. they bought bought the license. Uh breaking news. This is fantastic, just the headline alone. Do you remember in uh Super you probably don't. In Super Smash Brothers Brawl, <laughs> they did a nope. thing called um, I don't. <laughs> you were there right. was a, a segment in it called Masterpieces. Where okay. they gave you really short demos of the games that um, uh, inspired the, the, the characters were all from, mm -hmm. and uh, they were just set on time limits. So it was like the virtual. It was just the virtual console games because it was on the Wii. So it was just the virtual console games, but you could only play them for an incredibly limited period, uh, amount of time. Okay. Uh, after 13 years, somebody finally reached the credits in the Super Smash Brothers Brawl Ocarina of Time demo. Wow. Ocarina of Time masterpiece beaten in four minutes and fifty one seconds. Wow, I don't know how, but that's amazing. That's incredible. 
Oh boy. Anyway, back to August 2001 here. Uh, so yeah, PlayStation and N64, they're they're on their last breath. You know, the future's yeah. right around the corner for Nintendo, and uh, PlayStation 2 is already here. But over on the Dreamcast, still kicking. Not a bad month for Dreamcast. Um, you had World Series 2K2, which was a big improvement over the disaster piece that was 2K1, yeah. uh, and NCAA College Football 2K2, which I don't really know anything about. People no, I don't, like I don't either. Games. <laughs> yeah, they, they they were huge back then, but even the college uh, ones were pretty decent. But yeah, but not anymore. Yeah, uh, there, will, also there had, will not be college games, especially now that they actually have to pay the players. Oh, no fucking yeah. chance! Can't do that. Nope. Um, you you don't have to pay the fish for Sega Bass fishing though, and Sega Bass, t- <laughs> <laughs> and it shows, and, <laughs> and it, it shows. shows. Their performance is just terrible. <laughs> Sega Bass, Sega Bass Two came out for the Dreamcast. is pretty cool. Um, you know the fishing controller for Dreamcast it was awesome. Yeah, it's pretty great. And you also had Alien Front Online. Uh, this was continuing Dreamcast's push into online gaming, which was you know they were the first consoles to really do it outside. I of the think PC that game space. was pretty cool, wasn't it? I, I remember hearing it was cool. I never, I never played it. It wasn't. I wasn't doing the online gaming thing. I tried it out with a uh, Choo Choo Rocket, but mm. I was never really much of a shooter guy, so I didn't really mess with yeah. it. Yeah, I think I it was people like that one. It's so I remember it selling well because I remember yeah. selling it at my Funko Land pretty well. So, meanwhile, over on the PlayStation Two, we're still in the early days. Um, we got the PS2 version of Madden 02. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Armored Core Two, Another Age. Oh, I love the fucking Armored Core games. I don't know. I really about. do. It's good stuff. It is not for you at all. It is a hundred percent not your type of game. But not surprised at least. Yeah. Uh, really we got good. Extreme G three. That was the racing game. Like that was the futuristic motorcycle racing. Yeah, game. Tron kind of looking bikes. Yeah, I think the first yeah. Extreme G was an N sixty four game. I think so. Yeah. Uh, we got the PS2 port of the Dream previously Dreamcast exclusive Resident Evil Code Veronica, which is an awesome game. That was a pretty like solid that game. game. Yeah, I like it a lot. It was the farthest I'd ever gotten a Resident Evil game before four. Mm. Uh, and then we got something called Stretch Panic, which I remember being an interesting game. What the heck was Stretch Panic? Do I have Stretch Panic still? I might. I'm looking it up again because I know. I don't want to. I want to talk out of my ass. I don't care. Well, I don't care. But, <laughs> but oh, this, this was time a treasure can... game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have this. I do still. have I this. remember this game. It yeah. was like some super I, weird. I didn't play much of it, but I remember trying it in my store. It's like you got this scarf hand, demon hand thing coming out of the back of you, and you got to like move around and use the demon hand to smack the crap out of stuff. Yeah, it's a weird you could, game. I didn't get you it. Can, you can make people in the world have really big boobs. That's weird. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, then we had. I think um, it was just a game about making big boobs. Really? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all it was. Yeah, yeah August 2001. All right, well, whatever. All uh, right. So that's the PS2. That's an yeah. okay month. Uh, Stretch so Panic, is, like, you get a treasure game, that's fun. Yeah, at least they had something weird come out. And, you know, Resident Evil Code Veronica Code on PS2. Good. That was a yeah. big deal. Cause, Mad you know, No 2. Yeah, it was, it was pretty decent. Uh, game Boy Color, still still coming in, still still kicking. You got WWF Betrayal for Game Boy mm. Color. Cool. You know anything about that one? Nope. <laughs> I'm I got, not I've not got to see what a, this looks like. Not oh playing my God. wrestling games on... Oh, I don't think this is a wrestling game, sir. Is it a card game? No, I think it's a beat em up. Oh god. Nope. Nope. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a beat em up. Oh, this nope. looks incredible. You have I gotta mean, see this. This looks incredible. I will Just, I will add it to the list. Oh my god, the walking animation is Amazing! I don't know who you're supposed to be because I don't know wrestlers, but you're just <laughs> some dude in a thong. <laughs> that thong oh my and god! Some boots. Right. This so is amazing. I'm, I'm looking at Triple H and The Rock in one suit. That's Stone Cold. <laughs> Look at oh Stephanie McMahon's god. face on the cover. It looks like it looks like Triple H was just like just the tip, 
That's it. Just, I promise. And she was like, okay, fine. (laughs) And then he was like, haha, not just the tip. And like went well all the way. The walking animation combined with this music is amazing. Yeah, all right, I'll play it. (laughs) Fuck. This is amazing. (laughs) Oh, it looks like you can also be the Undertaker as well. But like, not... Not good Undertaker, American badass Undertaker who came out to Kid Rock. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a whole thing. Oof, wow. This does not look good. No, it looks great. <laughs> it looks amazing. And you're just beating up cops with pipes. like. Uh, well, naturally, they probably <laughs> deserved it. Because Stone oh Cold God. said so. All right, now I'm seeing Stone Cold. They've all got the same walking animation. This is amazing. This walking animation. I just, I, I love it. I love it, this. It looks like Triple H pedigrees absolutely everybody he fights. Like he does a three hit combo and then pedigrees a motherfucker. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, this is astonishing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> over Pain on the thon here we come. Oh, this is amazing. I wish it was multiplayer. I need an HD port, four players on this <laughs> right now. WWF Betrayal. It's glory. Uh, yeah. Over on the Game Boy Advance, though, you had Fortress, which was like, um, it was originally going to be spelled 4-T-R-I-S, because it was like going to have a, for, a Tetris tie-in, yeah. and then, like, I guess they couldn't get the license. It uh. being like a cross between an RTS and a Tetris game, which sounded interesting, but I tried playing it at my store once and was like, no. Nah. Yeah, it, it sounds like there's a cool idea there, but... I'm assuming it wasn't ex- executed all that well. Now, then again, I could be wrong. It could be, a, you know, one of our listeners. If you're a big Fortress for Game Boy Advance fan, <laughs> fan let, us, let know. us know why we're assholes. Uh, but the big release of this month was Mario Kart Super Circuit for Game Boy Advance. That's a good game. I mean, on pretty much any console, a Mario Kart game was a big deal, and Mario Kart had already become like it was. It was a a pretty big success on Super Nintendo, but the sixth Mario Kart 64 was just massive. Yeah. And uh, then Mario Kart Super Circuit was the third Mario Kart game. This was the first portable Mario Kart. Uh, and it was great. It was a cool little follow-up to the Super Nintendo game. Uh, took some cues from 64, but also was like flat Mode 7 kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was the first game to do the Retro Tracks, because, you know, you couldn't really oh, do yeah, that. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, this was the third game in the series yeah. doing Retro Tracks, and the, and the first one would be, would be literally impossible, and the second one would be like, okay, that's a little silly, but okay. Uh, this was the first one you had to hold the entire original Super Mario Kart was in this one. Yeah. Every track from it. That was really cool. It's, just, it's so weird, because it's such an expected part of the Mario Kart experience now that, like, you just, oh yeah, I guess they didn't have them in the beginning. Yeah, you know, because like they couldn't. But really, as soon as it became a viable option to start throwing some old tracks in there, they did it. Yeah, very that's cool a, game. That's a dope Love ass game. game. Yeah, I like it. Is. it. Uh, and then we travel back to 1991. Uh, but I think we should do this a little out of order. Yeah, uh, let, let's finish on something strong. So let's let's go back 40 years ago. To August of 1981, where I have uh, just almost nothing here. We have Triple Action for Intellivision may have come out in August of 1981. Okay. I, I couldn't really confirm that. I don't even know what this game is. Yeah, I don't. Triple I Action certainly don't know. In television, what what is this? I mean, I own it. <laughs> I own a bunch of Intellivision games that I've never never touched. I just got them for the dirtest of dirt cheap. So what the heck is triple action? Okay, so it's got a ripoff of combat. Okay. Oh, so it's a ripoff of combat, and then it's got like car racing. Um. All okay. right. I mean, that's not nothing. That yeah, could that's be fun. Not nothing. All right. Yeah. Sure. Good. Time. If you're gonna rip something off, you might as well rip off combat. Like, it's super funny, or it's super funny. It's super fun. God, I'm tired, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we got Faden. It's it's all right. We're gonna get through this. Uh, we got Steeple Chase for Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Tell Tele Games this is a horse racing game. More horse yeah. racing. More horse racing. I don't know if this is this this can really compare to the glory of a great day at the races. For I don't Phillips think it CDI. can. But then again, what can? 
This is the third horse game we've talked about tonight. <laughs> Between the, the 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 pony game I got for the the DS, <laughs> Great Day at the Races, and now Steeplechase for Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I've never played this one. This was a tele Sears telegame one. Um, looks pretty cute. You're just the little horses, and you jump over stuff. Everybody loves little horses, right? Who doesn't little love little Sebastian. horses? Sebastian. Bye, 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 little Sebastian. He does beat a tiny horse, and he does it better than anyone ever. <laughs> All right, so that's August of 1981. I'm sorry I don't have more to say about Steeplechase or Triple Action, but that was... I promise the 40 years ago stuff is going to start picking up pretty soon. Pretty soon, um, yeah. Pretty soon. We're not there yet, but it's it's going to start there. picking up more significantly. So let's let's travel back to August of 1991. This was... This was a hell of a month um, because you had you had the Super NES launch, which we're going to end on. Uh, but before we get to that, let's talk about some of the stuff that was ha- happening elsewhere. We've got uh, for NES still still cranking out the games. We had the Lone Ranger, uh, which I've never played. I I feel like I've heard that that's good. I mean, it's a Konami game, right? Yeah. Is it a Konami game? I think so. Palladium. Yeah, Konami, the Lone Ranger. So, I mean, Konami NES games typically weren't bad. Uh, I've just, I've never played this one. It wasn't one of the common ones. Looks pretty decent. It's like, you know, you got top-down segments, you got your side-scrolling segments. And it's late NES, so it sounds good. It looks pretty decent. I'd like to try this game a little more seriously sometime. Find out how this actually is. Oh yeah, yeah look at, yeah. I'm looking at the comments on this YouTube video and it's like the first ones are like this is one of the most overlooked masterpieces on the NES. It's the true definition of a hidden gem. Wow. All right. All right. Oh, well, this horse racing segment looks pretty good too. It's more horses. <laughs> All right. Well, after uh fuck, after uh After Goonies too. Goonies. Yeah. Lone Ranger it is. Uh on the other hand of the spectrum, you had Bill and Ted for NES. Mm. I remember this game being bad. Not good. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure for NES. Oh, yeah, this was the weird isometric one. You killed Ted, you medieval dickweed. One of the best insults ever. Yeah, I don't want to talk about this game. <laughs> no. Instead, we can talk about Ninja Gaiden 3, The Ancient Ship of Doom. The Ancient Ship of Doom. I also hate this game. I know you do. I do. I don't want to hate great. this game. It's not it's, great. They fucked up the physics. The yeah. physics in Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2 were just, just perfect. And then they made the jump all floaty. And then the American version, they made it too hard. The No continues and stuff like that. And the story was insane. I mean, the story's always been kind of insane, but... Yeah, but this was like stupid insane, not like stupid fun insane. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I, they, they, they really shit the bed on that one. Yeah, I don't like this game. Um, but I love... Well, and... Neither did anybody else, because how fucking long did it take to get another Ninja Gaiden after that one? I mean, we technically still years? haven't. It's been the uh, the the reboot. They didn't follow this game up at all. It was just, all right. Well, no, I'm just saying, but just another Ninja Gaiden, before they would yeah. even touch that property again. Ten years? Yeah. Fifteen years? Something like that? But it was I still, a, I mean, math. there's a lot of good stuff going on in this game. This is a very visually impressive NES game. Like... This has got some really, really cool tricks going on with, you know, parallax scrolling and stuff sure. like that. This is a good-looking NES game. It's got a pretty decent soundtrack, too. But they fucked it up? They fucked it up. At its core, if you play the Japanese version that, you know, is fair it, by Ninja Gaiden standards, at least there's there's <laughs> there's yeah. something to be had there. But the game makes me mad. Uh, the Master System also coming out swinging with Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. It was its only release, but still, you got a new Spider-Man game. Yeah, and it's not a bad one. It's not a great one, but it's not a bad one. What was this game like on Master System? I am unfamiliar with this game. Boy, ooh, that's some that's some graphics. It was playable. It didn't look very pretty. Yeah, that was it certainly looks like a video game. But it was Spider Man's got a real jaunt. Boy, when he walks he, he, he jaunts. That's he's that's got nice. he's got places to be, pictures yep. to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So let, we don't need to talk more about that one. Uh let's see what the Genesis was up to. We're still in uh are we you no, we're we're in post Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Did we talk about Sonic the Hedgehog? No. Did that happen yet? No, isn't that September? 
Oh God, was it? Is it? Am I crazy? When did Sonic Dear come God. out? I feel like Sonic hit before the Super Nintendo hit. I don't think it did. When did the first Sonic the Hedgehog game come out? Talk to me. Yeah, it was in June. Yeah, June twenty. Oh, we did. All right. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I, I'm not Good a big times. Sonic guy. I forgot. Yeah. So. All right. So this is the we're we're in a post Sonic Genesis world, right? So Genesis has got some serious steam, and uh, we got some real real winners here. Fantasia for Genesis. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Spider Man vs Kingpin also on Genesis. Uh, you had EA NHL hockey. That was a big deal. <clears throat> Hadn't quite gotten to like NHL ninety four territory yet, but the original EA NHL hockey is yes, yeah, it was solid it was release. a good good start. Mm -hmm. uh, opposite in the spectrum, you have James Pond two Robocod. Not great. Not great. Uh, people seem to great like name. that game. It's a great yeah. name. Very funny. Very funny joke. I wanted to like it because yeah. I do like the original James Pond. I do like that game. Uh, I didn't love James Pond 2. But then again, you know, it was different enough from the first game that I I guess I didn't give it enough of a chance. Maybe I should spend some time with Robocod. <laughs> you should not. I should not. I, uh, I, am, had, no, I don't God. know that for a fact. I just know it's true. <laughs> you should not spend any more time with Robocod than you have. We also had of the, like, you know, the Genesis games that had, like, that black grid box situation, like, the, the Sega published ones. Echo the Dolphin and that shit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had Fatal Labyrinth and Jewel Master. Ooh. Jewel Master is... God, I think it's pretty good. I seem to remember thinking that game was kind of cool. Let me let me look up some, some video on that one. It's got, like, some mystical bullshit going on and, like... Yeah, you're like a dude. Uh, yeah, and you're like any kind of dude. Different. You shoot like different spells depending on the different jewels that you yeah. have. Like, this that was a neat fucking idea. Cool, I think. This is yeah. This is one of those games I look at and say, why didn't Sega ever really follow up on this? Yeah. Yeah. What are we master. missing? Where we think this is cool and they didn't. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, like, it's not gorgeous or anything. It still looks like an early Genesis game. Like, it's it's got that very distinct look to it. But it's it's kind of a fun little fun little jaunt in the world of 2D side-scrollers. And what the heck was Fatal Labyrinth? That was another one of those. What was this one? That one, I don't know. Fatal Labyrinth. Well, it looks very gauntlet. I mean, that's not a bit... Again... Not a bad thing to co to copy. It's a little dungeon crawler. It's not yeah. as a, it it looks kind of turn based. This is interesting. Okay. I don't understand what I'm looking at. It's got good music though. Well, that's yeah. something. It's got that Genesis fart noise going on, but it's got some pretty no, good well. music. All right, and then let's see what's happening over on the Game Boy. Over in the handheld, uh, the world of handhelds, uh, we had. Bill and Ted's Excellent Game Boy Adventure, Adventure, A Bogus Journey for Game Boy, and I think the less said about that, the better. Yeah, I think we can leave that one. Uh, but the other two is a one-two punch from Konami. We had the Game Boy port of Blades of Steel, which, if you've never played it, is freaking great. It's almost... Which, it's wild. It's wild. It's almost like a sequel to the NES game. It adds like like super quick cutscenes when you score a goal of like the puck flying past the goalie. It's got awesome music. Like the NES game was very you know, quiet during the gameplay. Yeah. This yeah. one they added background music and it's freaking great. Blades of Steel for Game Boy is awesome. Yeah, it is so much cooler than it has any right to be. It has every right to be, goddammit. <laughs> It's no, Blades they, of Steel. They, they, sh they. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I'm just also. <laughs> Come I'm, on now. <laughs> I, they serious. didn't. They did not need to go that hard for a Game Boy Blades of Steel, but I'm glad they did because it's a legitimately awesome hockey game on the Game Boy. It's great. Yeah, it is very cool. Also, speaking of games, the, this one they needed to go this hard on Castlevania Two Belmont's Revenge. Mm -hmm. Castlevania Adventure is phenomenal music. Shit game to play. It's just not that fun to play. Castlevania no. 2 Belmont's Revenge is great. Like, that's... They, they sped him up just enough so that he was still slow enough that it didn't cause too many traces on the screen, but also they really built the game around 
his abilities and it was just so much more fun to play these levels were really they're well designed he did the whole like Mega Man choose a stage thing at the beginning it's got killer music game was great it's easily the best Game Boy Castlevania game I got into oh, it with right. a handful of people on the Stone Age Gamer Facebook page I posted like which one we all know Belmont's Revenge is the best Game Boy Castlevania game but which of these other two Castlevania Adventure or Castlevania Legends which one of these two was better and a bunch of people were giving me crap like what are you talking about Belmont's Revenge is, it's the same as the other ones it's just as crap no, it, I'm like what the hell so are not. you talking it's absolutely not and they were also uh, absolutely saying not. Legends is just as is is just as good as Belmont's Revenge and I'm like okay nope. now this is some serious revisionist history because Legends is more rare than in Belmont's Revenge. Legends Doesn't is make a very good. expensive Game Boy game, but it is not as good as Bel- like not at all. Like no. the game is busted. It's not fun. The level design is bland and flat. There's nothing to it. It's not a terrible game, but it's nowhere near the tier of Belmont's Revenge. Just not even close. No, you you're arguing in bad faith. Yeah, you're arguing based on, oh, this game's rare. It's an underappreciated masterpiece compared to blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. No, nope. it's not. You're not. Stop it. How dare it's you? It's not. You're wrong. You're bad and you should feel bad. Uh, so the Lynx was still uh, squeaking along there. Pun very much intended because there's a, the game that was released for the Lynx this month is called Super Squeak. <laughs> S-K-W-E-E-K. Hate it so much already. I don't know what this is. Looks like some kind of puzzle game? Sure. It certainly didn't come up on our uh, links lists. No, it was what not the- one that we added. So you're like this chicken thing, and you're moving around, trying to follow a path? Yeah, it's some sort of like weird proto-choo-choo rocket puzzle thing that does not look very good. I mean, it might be kind of cool. I mean, it might be. But I doubt it. I mean, uh, yeah, everyone everyone in the comments for this video is saying um, this game gets pretty tedious. Wow, this is a nine-hour playthrough of this game. A nine-hour Link's game? God bless World no. of Long Plays for spending nine hours playing this game. Nope. Wowzers. Nope. Oh, so it's like you gotta cover all the tiles on the floor. Oh, this does look kind of interesting. I cannot imagine it being interesting for nine hours, but wow. All right, so let's get to the real meat and potatoes of this month. In uh, August of 1991, we had the U.S. launch of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and with it, we got one, two, three, four, five games. Super Mario World, F-Zero, Gradius Three, Pilot Wings, and SimCity. Ah, man. (laughs) <laughs> so you know, this is an interesting this is an interesting launch setup so you've got super mario world which is by all accounts a better game than sonic the hedgehog um yes and I this is agree. coming from somebody who likes sonic the hedgehog but super mario world is is just one of my favorite games ever it's a freaking masterpiece it's so well put together even if you don't like mario games you got to look at this game and be able to at least recognize this is very well done I, they were putting in work. They were putting in work, and Miyamoto has somewhat famously said that he, you know, he felt the game was unfinished, um, and he's he's glad people liked it, but he wanted to do more with it. And I guess I can understand that to a degree, but I think the game is perfect the way it is. Super right. Mario World was such a great way to launch the system, but visually speaking, on a, on a pure wow factor, plopping this next to Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic looked cooler. I'm not going to say it looks better. Because I love the look of Super Mario World, but Sonic, without a doubt, looked cooler. So at least you you had that going on. But then you have F-Zero. Yeah, the double hit of F-Zero and Pilot Wings of showing off Super NES's Mode 7. Pilot Wings is awesome. How do you feel about these games? I love Pilot Wings. Oh, me too. I still think like, that game is really fun. Yeah, that game yeah. is still really fun to play. I still play that game on on the Switch. I still you know play it on the uh, Super NES uh, online thing. I, Pilot Wings is great. The original Pilot Wings is a it's. I, I understand like it looks like it's just a tech demo and it's doing a, it's pulling a lot of work out of that that mode seven there, but it's still it fun. is fun. Like it's it legit is fun. fun to play. It's got cool music. Yeah, it's got really cool music. Very um, 
Oh, uh, is that Soyo Oka, I think, did Pilot Wings? I think so. Uh, but I mean, F Zero is just oh, yeah. awesome. F Zero is fucking great. F Zero is good to the point where people still legitimately ask for it all these years later. Mm-hmm. Not and not because we just haven't gotten one, but because people legitimately like F Zero a lot. Yeah, the original there's a lot to like. One. Yeah. Uh, there hasn't been a legit bad F Zero game. I mean, the Game Boy, the second Game Boy Advance one, GP Legend, that was based directly off the anime at the time, was like, yeah, it was all right, but it still wasn't. It still didn't reach bad territory. It just re- no. felt felt stale. The original Super Nintendo one, running silky smooth the entire time, had such a great sense of style set up the sequels perfectly even with the, just the flat mode 7 thing the game felt amazing to play it was super yeah. fast super cool love f0 no it's uh, great yeah. it's fucking great then you've got then you've i, I can't say enough good things about pilo wings then you got gradius 3 which is a weird little mixed bag gradius 3 it's a, it's a good shooter it's not a great shooter yeah, specifically on the Super NES. Like, it's a really... It, it is a very solid shooter, but the Super NES version, it did it did a lot to... Sh- it did a lot to advertise for the Genesis. <laughs> the, the, if you were into shooters, yeah, yeah. the Genesis would not would not run Gradius 3 this way, because Gradius 3 on the Super NES is just pummeled by slowdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they recently fixed it, which is super cool. There's a, a a ROM hack of Gradius Three that you can run oh, on a Super yeah, yeah. Nintendo. I saw that. They fixed the slowdown, and it's nuts. Like you know, because after all these years of playing Gradius Three, just knowing that what that game is supposed to look like is slowed down, and then you play it like actually correct, and it's kind of mind blowing. It's kind of impossible now. Like, yeah, oh, son of a bleh. bitch. This this is really freaking me out. But it's 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 it goes to show that there is a really good game under there. But man. Releasing this game, I, I still don't know that it was a good idea as for this being a launch title. It it looked good on a shelf, but yeesh. This I game mean, I see I see what they down. were going for though. Oh yeah, for sure. Because when when you look at that launch, like there really is something for everybody. Yeah, you've got your platform, you got your racer, you got whatever the fuck Pilot Wings is, and then you got your shooter, your greatest three, and then you've got. Uh, one of the coolest launch titles you had the original sim city which was a really big deal back then because this was a huge pc game huge and, and getting, massive. It, getting the exclusive for your console launch like oh this is the console that runs sim city and like a totally unique version of it like it's all nintendo fight it's got another soya oka pulling pull double duty there uh, doing the soundtrack for sim city yeah. which was gorgeous uh, and the game was so much fun. I put hours and hours into SimCity. Yeah, it, it man, it's one of those games where I can't even tell you why it's fun. I can't either. It's all like numbers I, and management and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I really it's, it's can't explain fun. what is so fun about that game. But God damn it. And I haven't loved any of them the way that I love the first one. Same here. Specifically the Super Nintendo one. I didn't really play... Yeah. The um the PC original. I spent a bunch of time on SimCity 2000 for PC. That I did spend a bunch of time with, but even that I didn't like but even nearly that. as much. Yeah, not nearly as much as that original Super Nintendo one. I just love this game. Getting the, it's great. Uh, the the natural disasters and like Bowser could be a natural disaster. So fun. Oh my goodness, I love this game. What a launch, man! I remember getting That's my Super Nintendo. That's a great Nintendo. launch, man. We got ours, we must have gotten ours pretty close to launch, because I remember my sister and I were just, we were relentless to our parents for this game, for this system. <laughs> we were, we need to have a Super Nintendo, we have to have it, ah, screaming and begging for it, as often as humanly possible. So they definitely <laughs> got us one, and I know it was before launch, because Link to the Past wasn't out yet. So right. we definitely got it before Link to the Past hit, which I think is in a couple of months, right? I, it was the end of the year, wasn't it? Like November, it was a Christmas game? November, December? Link to the Past, Super Nintendo came out. North America. Oh, it was April of the following year, actually. It came out in November in Japan, but it didn't come out till April of 92. So I'm guessing that we got this probably around 
boy, did we get it after Christmas? We must have gotten it after Christmas then, because it wasn't that long. It was no, it was a month or two before we got a link to the past. Because I remember there being like a decent build up to it, and I was playing Mario World for a while, so maybe we got it around November. Uh, but we got our system, and we each got to pick one game. And we looked at the back of the console box, and I said, Zelda 3, that's the one I want. Okay, well, right. it's not out yet, so you've got to wait. And I said, okay, <laughs> fine. And the system came with Mario World, and then Jess, my sister, she picked F-Zero. So we had F-Zero and Super Mario World for a couple of months before we got anything else. Uh, and that was fine. I had... Yeah. I was fine with that. Like, mastering F-Zero and trying to get Star 96 in Mario World, like... I was good <laughs> and just just drooling over the prospect of a link to the past. And then when that thing came out in April, we got it like as soon as it came out. See, they, I didn't promise it to me. I did not get mine until uh, July of ninety two. I okay. was uh, I was down in Florida visiting my grandparents. They had uh, they had moved to Florida. At that point, and uh, I was I was down there, and we were <laughs> so again baseball. This guy who used <laughs> to play for the Red Sox called uh, Mike Greenwell was his name, and when he retired, he lived in the same town that my grandparents lived in. It's where he was from in Southern Florida. It wasn't like Miami. I forget the fucking name of the town. Um, oh, God, then that's gonna bother me. Um, but he had an arcade thing. It was like Mike Greenwell's like happy fucking fun zone or some shit, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um, and, uh, we used to go to that all the time, right? Because I was, I was a kid and they were my grandparents. Um, so they had to take me to, um, you know, to a place that, that we could go. Uh, was it Gator Mike's? Yeah, Fort Myers, that's where it was. Fort Fort Myers, Florida, and Cape Coral, Florida, that's where they were. Anyway, um, so we were down there and, like, you know, I was playing arcade games and whatnot, and uh, it, it was, you know, the middle of the summer, and I was like, you know, Grandpa, and you know, Ani, because it was Grandpa and Ani, said, you know, guys, uh, my birthday's in October. And you guys aren't coming up to see me in October, right? And they were like, probably not. Why? And I was like, well, fucking Street Fighter 2 comes out on the Super Nintendo, and I don't happen to have one of those <laughs> just yet. Because I still had, I think I still have my Turbo Graphics at that point. Um, I would imagine so. And I was like, so we could, like, do an early birthday present, maybe? And we could do this and uh they were like if that's what you would like to do and i was like you fucking ain't right that's what i would like to do let's go do that right now and we went immediately over to like a fucking walmart or whatever the hell it was and got the super nintendo and street fighter and i think it was still coming with mario world at that point it's fucking good times <laughs> that's anyway that's the whole story yeah. that's the whole thing it's a good story <laughs> I remember calling up my buddy Nick, my best friend, when I was growing up. I was like, get your ass ready, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to whoop your ass in Street Fighter when I get home. Talking shit as an 11-year-old. Crazy. Anyway. God, my cousins had Street Fighter 2. They got that one, like, straight away, and I had never even heard of it before. And uh, I remember going to their house... Uh, and they were like, oh, you got to try out this this uh, Street Fighter game. All right, we're going to go outside and play baseball. I'm like, I'm going to stay in here and play with your Super Nintendo. <laughs> I, yeah. every, every time I went to their house, that's that's what wound up happening. Like, you know, before I got Link to the Past, uh, was, was it before Link to the Past? I feel like I went to their house, and I got to check the date on this one to make sure I'm not crazy. Mm -mm. It was April, this was, yep, September of 91. So I remember it was before Link to the Past came out, I did get to play a couple other games for the Super Nintendo, and they were at my cousin's house. I got to play UN Squadron and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Ooh, that's good stuff. Right, was Super Ghouls and Ghosts before that? I'm sure it was. That One is was good Ghouls stuff. Was also November 91, yep. Yeah, so those two were just like 
oh my god and i think they let me borrow you in squadron which was just the coolest damn thing <laughs> Uh, and uh, so that's how I played those two and then I went over there later and got to play Street Fighter 2 there for the first time and they let me borrow it because they were like eh, whatever it's fine they were <clears throat> they liked video games but not as much as I did and they would right. rather go outside and play sports and uh, I would rather not go outside and play sports <laughs> so uh, that I do was, not want to do that yeah no that does not sound like a good time to me I'd rather stay in where it's air conditioned and I have awesome video games Street Fighter yeah. 2 blew my freaking mind man it's a good fucking um, game man every game that I played for Super Nintendo blew my damn mind like when I rented Super Castlevania 4 for the first time, I was like, oh my God, oh, what's Castlevania going to be like on this system? Oh my God. Or when I rented Mega Man X for the first time, I looked at him and be like, what the heck is Mega Man X? What is, th what is this? It's in the future. Wait, Mega Man was in the future. This isn't the future of the future. <laughs> what? <laughs> this and is the future game, future. Oh my, oh my God. And just every, the, the system constantly impressed me. It it, constantly yeah. blew me away. Like, well, and I think when you when you look at that launch lineup, it was such a jump. Oh my god! From yeah, a, over from what, over bit. NES, yeah. such a jump. You know, and we've talked about that before. How like you really don't you don't see that that jump anymore. No, you don't. And even we yeah. hadn't seen that jump even with the Genesis. Like, sure, we were playing cool looking stuff like Altered Beast and even Sonic the Hedgehog on the Genesis, but Super Mario World felt so big, I, so different. And so, no, so different. No home console racer felt anything like F-Zero. No. Like, the best the Genesis could do trying to match those amazing Sega uh, arcade machines, like with, with stuff like Space Harrier and OutRun, nothing compared to... Like, that stuff was amazing in the arcades, but the, the, the console ports never did anything for me because they were so yeah, choppy. Oh, the console ports at Afterburner and shit like that? Yeah, like, no. They were fun because yeah, they you were suspended... Fun, yeah. You suspended your, you know, whatever, your disbelief to be like, no, this is fine. This is great. Yeah, like I, can, I love I can, this. I'm I can, playing this home. It still you know? feels kind of like it, but no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't but it anything wasn't. like the arcade one. Then you get F-Zero and it's just silky smooth. And and Pilot Wings felt like playing a 3D game because you were moving really around did. in 3D space. It was nuts. It really did. I, it was a, a hell, a hell of a launch. And a I mean, I don't know how many people are talking about this, but it's a pretty good system. Huh. <laughs> I don't hear people mention the Super Nintendo very often, and it's pretty good. I think it's remembered somewhat fondly. I, th I think more people should check it out. Really? Super There's Nintendo. There's a couple of good games it. on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Small handfuls. Small God, handfuls. Remember the, remember the first time I played Super Metroid and was oh, just like... Are you kidding me? We were talking me? about that when we did our Metroid episode. Yeah. The, the fucking rain, man. Just unreasonable. Oh, God. When I finally got that Link to the Past game home, too. Again, with the fucking rain. Just wow. Wow yeah. on top of wow. Even, yeah. you know, stuff like Earthworm Jim and Cool Spot with the whole, like, the really intense animation and stuff. Like, oh, my God. There's a lot of really, really, really good stuff on there. God, the there's a lot of I shit. My cousin's there's a lot house of shit, playing but... Super Bases Loaded. You want to tie it into some baseball? Mm. I played the Please. shit out of Super Bases Loaded. When did that come out? Because they always got a bunch of games right when they came out. So it came out in September of 91. So that must have been another one that I played there even before Street Fighter. And it's definitely before Zelda. And holy crow, me and my sister played the heck out of that game. We, I think we wound up getting this one. I don't remember when, but God, we played so much of this game. It was so much fun. The Atlanta Amoebas. That was always my team. Because, like, <laughs> what a ridiculous name for a team. Yeah. The New York Mercs. <laughs> the New York Mercs. Oh, my God. I played so, so much Super Nintendo. Yeah. So and much. It, Super Punch-Out. Oh, Super fucking... Punch-Out. God, what a game. Final Fantasy 2. Mario Paint. Just, oh my Chrono God. Chrono Trigger. I mean, God and if you look at it. just, I mean, even just thinking about the stuff that's coming up. And this is, this this was why I was never able to, it took me so long to appreciate the Sega Genesis. I mean, not just because I fell for all the Nintendo propaganda hook, line, and sinker, but just 
for me and my sensibilities, when I'm looking at the stuff that's coming out on Genesis compared to the stuff that's coming out on the Super Nintendo, even for the next couple of months, it's like the Super Nintendo's follow-up month. Jeez, next month on Super Nintendo, we're getting Super Bases loaded in UN Squadron. Like, mm. that alone is just nuts. It's mm. so good. By the end of the year, we're going to have, for a Super Nintendo, we're going to have, um, ooh, yikes, October. Bad month. October is going to be a quick one. Wow, that's bad on all platforms. Well, mm-hmm. we got in uh, November, we're going to have Final Fight. We're going to have Super Ghouls and Ghosts and Final Fantasy 2. In December, we're going to get uh, Super Off-Road and Super Castlevania and Home Alone. Uh, mm. um, yeah. Now, it starting like December and then next year, yeah. The 30 years ago going back or the yeah, 30 fuck. Yeah, the th- to the Super <laughs> Nintendo um is going to be really fun to talk about. It is. There's so much good stuff coming. And you know, we're going to be getting a bunch of stuff uh for some of the other platforms. So like Genesis definitely put up a fight. It definitely just, did. For my money, one to one is it's it's Super Nintendo hands down and it always has been. I uh, I agree. Agreed wholeheartedly. Final well, Fantasy 3. God oh damn my it, God. That game. Final Fantasy 3. That made God, me or 6 <laughs> if you want to be a dick about it. Like, Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, like God, the list goes on and on. The Super Nintendo is my favorite console of all time. Again, more people should be talking about it. I they don't, should. I don't, I don't understand, Chris. It's been a quiet day. <laughs> Nobody's been talking about this poor little forgotten system that poor turns, forgotten system turns brown all on its own. It does. I played so much NBA Jam. God, the Super so Scope, Super Scope Battle Clash. Hmm. All right, fucking end the podcast. We're, getting, we're way off track. Yeah, sorry. That's I'm like, it. Oh, good night. Castlevania Fuck Dracula you. X Clay Fighter, man. Mm. Clay Fighter was not good. No, it was, but it fun, was cool. Though. Yeah, it was fun. Even fucking actor. All right, shut up. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> Tired. Actors are was close to launch too, right? That was. An, it was. I feel like that was a pretty early game. It was. So we'll we'll probably be talking about that soon. Anyway. All right, that's that's gonna be it. That's our show. Join us next week as Dan and I put together another Stone Age starter kit, this time for the game gear. Yeah, it's gonna be good. That's gonna be an interesting one. It's gonna be more interesting than our links one. Uh, if you had a hundred dollars <laughs> to put together a physical collection of game gear titles to start out with, what would we get? Find out in a week. Uh it's gonna be fun. I like these things. Anyway, we're on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, the Geekade Patreon, which helps us keep this show running week after week, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following a link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. I would like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That's it. I'm going to go pop in uh, Golf My Way uh, <laughs> and, and give it the old research, and then I'm going to watch the Spider-Man trailer a few more times, because wee! Alright. I'm going to go watch it for the first time. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Love it. Catch it. Uh, have a great night. Uh, on behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games.